Have you ever wanted to get into Minecraft 3DS speedrunning, but never had an idea of where to start? Well, this video is just for you. In this video today, top Minecraft 3DS speedrunners CZX, Dark for President, and I will be guiding you through every bit of the Minecraft 3DS Any% Set Seed speedrun category. Before we begin, there are a couple things you might want to prepare for to start speedrunning. First, you may want to have a timer to track your time. The best timer we can suggest is Live Split. If you already know how to use Live Split, you can go ahead to the next step. Otherwise, you will find a link in the description leading you to a tutorial. Now that you have your timer set up, it's time to find the perfect recording setup for you. Now, there are several ways you can get the perfect recording of your 3DS. The first setup you can do is point an iPad or phone at your 3DS on a table, like seen here. Or, you can place a phone at the edge of a table or desk and have your 3DS underneath it. Either way, make sure that both screens are visible throughout the entire video. Now that you have a recording set up perfect for you, you need to know about the most important exploit in the game. The duplication glitch. The 3DS has the easiest duplication glitch to perform compared to all other consoles. This glitch requires at least three of any stackable item. You must put the items in your hotbar first, select them by hovering over them and pressing A, then use the D-pad or circle pad to hover over any slot in your inventory, then press Y and X in order. This will trick the game into placing an entire stack of that item in your inventory. This is the most abused glitch in the speedrun, so get used to performing it on a regular basis. Before we get started, it is important to note that changing the difficulty to peaceful at any point during or before the run is not allowed. In addition, you must show yourself creating the world every time you begin a speedrun attempt. You may not cut parts out of your video, speed up any parts, or do anything else to give yourself an unfair advantage. You can, however, mute the audio during your run if you so choose. Finally, when starting your run, the timer starts when you make your first in-game input. Now that you have everything you need to know to start speedrunning, let's get into the run itself. If this is your first time speedrunning Minecraft 3DS, then this section is right for you. If you already know the basics of Minecraft 3DS speedrunning, or if you already know what the route is like, then skip to either of these sections. Now, with that out of the way, let's firstly begin on the Minecraft 3DS title screen. Make sure you have started your recording and create the world. Once you spawn in the world, you will be traveling right to go inside a nearby blacksmith. Alright, now let's officially begin. Immediately run over to the blacksmith and before you go inside, grab a log from the frame of the blacksmith. Once you do this, open the chest inside and grab the iron pickaxe and the two diamonds. Before you leave the blacksmith, craft your logs into planks and duplicate the planks. Next up is the Desert Temple. It's not too far away from the blacksmith as you can see here, just make sure you're going in the right direction. Break a block in this vicinity on the outer walls of the temple to enter, and once you do, break away this orange terracotta to fall down. Be cautious with your fall however, as you don't want to step on the pressure plate. After you have fallen, pay close attention to these two chests here. This one contains three pieces of gold in a single stack, so grab that. This one contains three iron in two separate stacks, so you will need to combine them into a three stack. Use those planks you duplicated earlier to pile out of the temple and exit through the way you came in. Once you're outside, it is now best to duplicate the gold and iron ingots. Make your way back to the village and find the cleric. The cleric is the villager with the purple cloak on, and if you can't find it, search around the houses or in the library itself. Most of the time, it will be outside in the middle of the village. Trading is next on the list, so begin by trading your duplicated gold as shown here, and then exit the trading menu and wait for the villagers to level up. Make sure you duplicate emeralds as well before you continue. Repeat this process twice, and eventually ender pearls will become available to trade, so get at least three of those, and duplicate at least two stacks for later use. Before you start crafting, find a farmer, which is the villager with no cloak on, and trade with it until apples become available, and trade once to get five. It is now time for crafting. Make eight sticks and a crafting table first, then place down the crafting table and craft a diamond sword, bucket, golden pickaxe, golden shovel, wooden shovel, 
three golden blocks, and finally a boat with the previously crafted wooden shovel. Exit out of your crafting menu and duplicate the three golden blocks. Once you do this, craft three enchanted golden apples and duplicate those. Now it is off to the nether. Make your way over to these coordinates. A good giveaway for remembering the location of it is this cactus. Begin by using the shovel to dig down. Once you hit sandstone, start using your pickaxe. After some time, you will come across two pieces of diorite. After you dig them out, dig two more stone blocks beneath this and use your shovel to dig out the gravel beside you. Once you grab a piece of flint, dig the rest of the way down until you're in the stronghold. Be cautious here, as there could be a lot of mobs down here. Try your best to destroy the spawner and place blocks in the opening to this room as fast as possible. Once you do this, begin by making the nether portal. This can be complicated for some, but it goes as follows. Place the water in this exact spot, and then use your empty bucket to place the three obsidian from this lava like so. Jump down in this corner next and grab lava and place the obsidian like so. Ensure that you are doing these pieces of obsidian first, so it makes it easier to place the others. But make sure to place the obsidian here last, as it will get rid of the water. Once the portal is made, throw an item into the portal as you enter. This is an important step, as it will place you in a location that is easier to access the fortress. Now, if you have live split set up, now would be the time to make your first split. All right. Once your nether loads, immediately turn left out of the portal and throw an ender pearl around here. This should place you in an area where you can see the fortress. Now, pearl it in this exact location and from here you should see a blaze spawner out in the open. Go down to it and try to get two blaze rods. If blazes take forever to spawn, take out the blocks beneath the spawner. Once you manage to get two blaze rods, craft them into blaze powder, duplicate it, and then craft three ender eyes and duplicate those. Now, to get back to the nether portal, we would recommend you to go back the way you came in to get to the blaze spawner. So that means go back through the nether fortress walls where you dug out to get to the spawner and keep walking through until you go down the stairs. Once you do this, ender pearl over the gap in the nether fortress to get to the other side. Now you are at where you started at the nether fortress. So now, Go to this exact location and ender pearl around here, and once you do, you will end up around this vicinity. You should see the portal at this point, so go ahead and go back into it and make another split. Now go up to the end portal and add all of your eyes to the portal frames and enter the end. Once your game freezes as you enter the portal, make yet another split. Alright, now you're in the home stretch. Make sure your boat, diamond sword, ender pearls, and some blocks on your hotbar at this point to get ready for the dragon. To get to the exit portal in the middle, ender pearl over it and place it on the boat at the very top of it. Pile up with some blocks and place it here. You will now have to wait for the dragon to perch. This is complete RNG, so you could get lucky or not so lucky in regards to how quick the dragon perches. If the dragon perches, then great, run over to it and hit its head with your diamond sword. Be careful, however, as jumping and getting too close to the dragon will send you flying. If the dragon doesn't perch, try running out past the end crystal towers and run back in. That should do it. And if that doesn't work, then either keep waiting or reset, as it is not guaranteed to happen every time within a timely manner. If you do manage to kill the ender dragon, quickly make your way into the exit portal, and once your game freezes, that's time. If you manage to get a successful run, congratulations. It's certainly a lot to learn, but doing a full game run of Minecraft 3DS is certainly rewarding in its own right. At this point, if you do so choose, you can submit your successful run to the speedrun.com page, and if your run gets verified, then your run will be displayed on the leaderboard. Now that was just the beginner's category. There are still two more in this video that we will go over in case you would like to learn about some more advanced tips and tricks to get even better times. Welcome to the intermediate category. This category is perfect for runners who have the basics down and just want to learn some more tips that can further increase their success in speedrunning Minecraft 3DS. This category is going to focus on the exact same route as explained in the beginner category, so if you don't know it, please refer back to that section of the video. 
First things first, the overworld split. The split has the most steps out of all splits in this run, so there's lots of room for improvement here. Once you have crafted everything after trading with the villagers, we would highly recommend you to manage your inventory properly, as this will make it a lot easier later in this run. This next change is one that can differentiate between different runners and their runs. You may have noticed we said to throw an item through the nether portal in the beginner guide. That is because the nether portal is in the perfect position to change the location when an item is thrown in. If you do not throw the item through first, you will end up here, a completely different location than the previous portal. The official names for the different areas are top route and bottom route. Top route being to throw an item through the portal, and bottom route being not to throw an item. The way to get to the fortress from here is by throwing a pearl at this hill. Be careful not to fall into the lava. Next, throw another one to this ledge up here. Now you should be able to recognize the location and should be able to get to the blaze spawner easily. Speaking of the blaze spawner, there is a different blaze spawner located in this fortress that we would encourage you to use here. Make your way over to this area next to the fortress. You will then notice some unloaded chunks right here. Don't worry about them as after a few seconds they will eventually all load. Now, go over to where these pieces of nether quartz are for the blaze spawner is right underneath them. Dig down in this area. Now you will be at the blaze spawner. Be sure to have your sword ready as there could potentially be lots of blazes waiting for you down here. All you need to go do is to get two blaze rods, so keep killing blazes until you get them. If blazes don't spawn, try breaking the blocks beneath the spawner like so. If you seem to be waiting a while for blazes to spawn, it may be best to reset the run. Alright, if you have collected the two required blaze rods, craft them both into blaze powder, duplicate it and create three eyes of ender and duplicate those. Now it's time to go back to the nether. Pile out of the blaze spawner and throw an ender pearl like so. Next, throw an ender pearl down to the ground here. Finally, walk over to the lava pool and throw an ender pearl to get across it. Before you enter the portal, be sure to stand as far right and as close to the back as possible when the animation plays as shown here. Not doing these steps will not spawn you back in the stronghold. Now that you're back at the stronghold, place the eyes of ender in the end portal frames and enter the end. The process for the end is exactly the same as the beginner guide. Teleport over to the exit portal, place a boat on top of the exit portal, wait for the dragon to perch, kill it, and you are done. If you manage to get a better time with the tips shown in this category, then congratulations! As you learn more tips and tricks while practicing as much as possible, you will soon be beating your personal best in no time. Finally, let's move on to the advanced category. This category will further expand on the tips showcased in this category to help you get competitive times. If you believe that you have a strong grasp of how to speedrun Minecraft 3DS, then this is the category for you. The advanced category will go over some advanced tips and tricks to help you get competitive times, so let's go ahead and get started. The first tip happens right before the actual run itself. Before starting a new speedrun attempt, reset your game completely by closing the software in your 3DS home menu. This will help reduce lag while you're speedrunning, which can help get through laggy areas more efficiently. Resetting your game also helps in a different area as well. Whenever you reset your game, it resets the RNG in all chests, so items and chests will have the same location every time. Next up, we have something called the Farmer Skip. This strat will remove the need to trade with the farmer for apples. When you enter the desert temple in your attempt, grab the golden iron as usual, but also grab the three golden apples located in these chests. There are two located in this chest, and one located in this chest. Once you have them all, duplicate them. The farmer skip can save up to 20 seconds, so it's definitely worth it to do in all your attempts. Be very cautious though, since regular golden apples do not come with all the effects as enchanted golden apples, like fire resistance, so be sure not to light yourself on fire. You may also want to figure out how to use reset efficiency, especially if you are going for competitive times. What I would suggest is resetting at these points if the requirements are not met. Reset at the blaze spawner if there are no instant spawns, since you will have to wait a long time for more to spawn. Reset in the end if the dragon doesn't perch within about 15 seconds. Usually the dragon will either perch very fast or very slow. Next is something that will make controlling your character a lot easier. You may have noticed that the seasick will get slippery, causing gameplay to get significantly harder. One way to get around this is to regularly wipe it down with a paper towel or a piece of cloth. Some people have adopted the use of a glove to prevent the seasick from getting wet at all. 
Next is a small but important tip. You may have noticed that when going back to the overworld from the nether, that the game lags intensely, which makes it hard to do anything. Do not do any inventory management at this stage. This includes crafting ender ice, duplicating them, moving your boat to your hotbar, etc. Do all inventory management before you enter the overworld. It's a small tip, but it saves a surprising amount of time. The final tip in this category is using ender pearls to save time in several areas. All areas you can use ender pearls to save time are from the village to the location of the stronghold, the nether portal to the nether fortress, using them in the end to reach the exit portal, and using them to get outside of the end crystal towers if the ender dragon doesn't perch. What to learn from this tip is to basically never walk. If you need to get somewhere, throw an ender pearl. You have an infinite supply anyway. Alright, and that concludes all our tips and tricks for the advanced category. Judging by the fact that you are watching this category, you already have lots of knowledge on how to speedrun Minecraft 3DS, but we hope that you find these tips helpful for getting competitive times. And that concludes our guide on how to speedrun Minecraft New Nintendo 3DS Edition. Firstly, I want to say a huge thank you to Dark for President and CZX for their efforts with the script, voiceover, and overall production of this video. Be sure to check out their channels, linked down below in the description. Also, don't forget to check out the speedrun.com page for Minecraft 3DS, as well as the other links to the community. I really hope you guys found this video helpful, and if you have any further questions, please comment down below. And with that being said, thanks for watching.